Chisaki, Blue Futon, out of the box, out of the wall, we have Quarantine with Dexter's sister. Actually, Jennifer Carpenter, but it is uh, Dexter's sister from the TV show. So, Quarantine, have I seen it before? I have in theaters a long time ago, 2000, so it's 2009. So, let's see if Quarantine holds up 11 years later. <laughs> So Quarantine what it's about, well, it's Jennifer Carpenter. She's a news anchor. She's at a Los Angeles fire precinct, and she's basically following the night crew around to see what kind of action she could see. So it's kind of boring for the night until a call gets into this random building where this woman's just like screaming. So they go upstairs. Something's not right. Is she a zombie? Does she have a disease? We don't know until about halfway into the movie. And you know what? It's actually pretty smart. So if you haven't seen it, I'm not going to tell you. But the actual disease is not something stupid. It actually makes sense. You're like, huh, interesting. So with this movie, what I like about it? Well, this is a found footage movie, if you want to put it that way. This one is filmed like the guy filming the camera. The cameraman of a news crew is all under him. That is the only camera you could see in this movie. So with that, it actually works on the element of found footage. Even though people might not like that camera, you know, shaking a lot. This one doesn't have that much shaky camera. So maybe at the very end of the movie, the last 15 minutes, yeah, it gets the shaky camera because they have to run from everyone. But overall, the camera style works for this type of movie. There's good characters in this story that you kind of understand each one. And every actor, you're like, I've seen that person before. I've seen that person before. So it's not like they get some low life, low life. That's such an awful thing. Like low budget actors. There are some high budget actors in this movie. But with this movie, you've seen it before, and it kind of goes to those tropes of like what's happening. And I think the problem is with this movie, you have a strong story. You really do. Until the last 15 minutes, even though it's very unique of what they decide to do with what this disease actually is, and what is going on in the attic of the place, and what's happening, I wish they kind of did a little bit more expansion of that, of why is this person wanting this disease and why has no one noticed at this moment of time? Because this person was supposed to be in the attic for months from Boston. But they kind of just like push that to the sidelines. And you kind of wish they expanded more of that. Apparently this is based on the REC. Another Spanish uh, TV series. Or it's not TV series. Movie series. I do have that from Shout Collection. I have not watched any of those yet. But apparently Quarantine is loosely based off that. And there is a sequel as well which I have not seen yet. But what fault of this movie is actually Jennifer Carpenter's character at the last 15 minutes. She goes into a full-blown panic, screaming, crying of keep the light on her, keep the light on her, keep the light on her. And it kind of gets annoying kind of quick because, yeah, you might be scared. And this cameraman is really trying to keep his composure like, listen, lady, listen, woman. You know, he never said, listen, lady or woman. Maybe he did. But he was being like, calm down, hold my hand, I got you. And there's a little stuff like that where you're just like, she's freaking out way too much and she's screaming really loud. And you're just like, calm down. The more you panic, the more you're going to fail. And it also there's some other scenarios where you just don't understand, especially the attic, above the attic scene. I'm just going to say that. What, what was going on in there? What was that character doing in there? Like, who was that? And I think they just did that for a quick jump scare. But you're just like, when you think about it, you're like, why is that? person there and who is that like are they were hmm so you know little stuff like that where it's just like you know it's supposed to be for jump scares it's supposed to be the art like oh, ha, 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 and you just like kind of forget about it but the more you think about it you're like that doesn't really make any sense but these directors did no escape uh as above so below which as above so below is a very very good movie from what i remember this one is a good movie a little tame uh, story-wise, though, I think the story-wise succeeds over everything else. The acting's good, except for Jennifer Carpenter. Even though she does a great job, it kind of gets annoying real quick. And the very end is very tropey of like, okay, you kind of saw that coming, you kind of knew it was coming, and you're like, yeah, I kind of hate endings like that, the abrupt endings of like, you know, and scene done, and good luck, see you next time, thank you for the 750. But overall, uh, quarantine, it works as a movie. It has its jump scares, but there are also some genuine scares of like, I don't want to call them genuine scares, but just stuff that happened. Like, oh, that kind of startled me. So that was pretty good. 
But overall, I like the story. Some of the scenarios are just kind of weak. Some of the characters are weak. Not that fleshed out. But you, with movies like this, you don't need to flesh out every character in this apartment complex. Which is 15 of them. Which is a lot. So quarantine will receive a 3 out of 5 with Blue Toms. It goes at 60%. So see the critics new scores gave this. So the critics at 56% with 85 of them. That's kind of a low number. Audience score 44% with 881. Nine, five, two, almost a million. Here's quick consensus. Quarantine uses effective atmosphere, consistent scares to stand above the crop of recent horror films. I don't remember what horror films came out during this time, but I can kind of agree with that. Just thinking about it where there are some good scenarios, good story. And I do wish it kind of fleshed out on the story a little bit more of why this was happening and how the outside world is really going to deal with what they're doing. Because it really doesn't explain that. You understand the guy filming the camera. But with everything happening at the end. How does the audience see this film? Like was it posted on the web? Was it posted on another newsreel? Was it in the cloud? Even though the cloud didn't exist in 2009. So there's that kind of scenarios as well. Where you're just like okay. I'll just have to believe that someone found this tape. And we're somehow watching it. Anyway, do you agree with the 60, the 56, or the 44? Chase out the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know things, Futon, Topia, you Blue Tony. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Quarantine. We know what that feels like, don't we? <laughs>